Hey guys, while I was working on updating all of the builds for season three, I ended up realizing that Poison Claw is actually going to be a lot better this season. The reason for that is because the lucky hit chance on Rabies is a lot higher than Poison Creeper, and we finally have a way to reduce the cooldown on it. So I put this build together over the last couple hours, and I'm super excited about it. All right, so let me walk you through the skills. First off, we've got Claw. We're still using the Great Staff of the Crone. The main reason we're using this is because we want to have a lot of procs for lucky hit and things like that, so that we're able to reset our Poison Creeper and also activate the healing from Masochistic, as well as the cooldown reduction for our ult from Calm Before the Storm. One of the biggest parts of the damage from this build is actually going to be the X-Falls, and we're going to be triggering it pretty often because we have a lot of different sources of poison. On our skills, the sources of poison are Poison Creeper, Rabies, and our Claw. And with our Claw, we're also casting Storm Strike, which means we're going to have additional chances of poison from that as well. And then even our ultimate is going to be applying poison. The Blood Howl is just here to activate the Vigilance passive, give us some healing, and some bonus attack speed. And our Trample is just here to break CC. For our Spirit Boons, we're going with Wariness, Swooping Attacks, Pack Leader, Masochistic, and Calm Before the Storm. For equipment, we're going to be going with Tempest Roar on our helmet, Virulent Aspect on our chest, Pain Gorger's Gauntlets for our gloves, Aspect of Might on our pants, Aspect of Adaptability on our boots, Great Staff of Kronos our weapon, Rapid Aspect on our amulet, X Falls Ring, and Aspect of Elements. If you're in the written guide, you can find the stats by hovering over an item or clicking on this little icon here. And we're going to be going through the detailed stats on each item. So for the helmet, we've got basic skill attack speed, ranks of poison creeper, total armor, and cooldown reduction. If you end up short on your stats to hit all of your rare nodes in your paragon boards, feel free to take all stats here as well. On our chest piece, we're going with total armor, damage reduction from poisoned enemies, damage reduction from close enemies, and damage reduction from distant enemies. For our gloves, we're going with the Pain Gorgeous Gauntlets, but I went ahead and listed some useful stats here in case you need them. On our pants, we're going with total armor, damage reduction from poisoned enemies, damage reduction from close enemies, and ranks of rabies. For our boots, we're going with total armor and werewolf form, movement speed, all stats, and willpower. If you end up not hitting max resistances, you can replace the willpower stat with a resistance stat, and then go for individual resistance gems in each of the accessories. For our amulet, we've got ranks of all wrath skills, damage reduction from poisoned enemies, total armor while in werewolf form, and cooldown reduction. And then for our rings, we're going with critical strike chance, maximum life, damage to close enemies, and lucky hit chance. For our gems, we're going to go with topaz on the weapon, ruby on the armor, and diamonds on the jewelry. As always, you can go with the individual resistance types if you need to. For our seneschal construct, we're going with flash of adrenaline, which is going to have safeguard, tactical, and duration support. And then we're also going with Tempest, and we're going to have poison support, arcing support, and multi-shot. This one's very important for the build. For the skill tree, we're maxing out both our Claw and our Storm Strike, and we're going to Fierce Claw and Fierce Storm Strike. We're going to grab Blood Howl and Preserving Blood Howl. We're going to max out Ancestral Fortitude and Vigilance. We're going to max out Poison Creeper and go to Brutal Poison Creeper. And we're also going to max out Call of the Wild. Now, normally for a poison build, you'd want to go Ferocious Poison Creeper. But because we're using X-Falls, it's better to have a shorter duration, so we're not going with it. Also, this is going to give us a 20% critical strike chance increase, which is going to help us get our resets for our Poison Creeper. In our Wrath Tree, we're going to be maxing out Rabies, and we're going to go to Savage Rabies. This is something I'm going to have to feel out in-game, but for now I'm going with a shorter duration because it's better for triggering the X-Falls. But it's possible if it doesn't spread fast enough, I might go with Natural Rabies. I'm doing 3 points in Toxic Claws, as well as 3 points in Venom, And then we're grabbing Cataclysm, we're getting Supreme Cataclysm, and we're also going to max out Heightened Senses, and then we're going with Ursine Strength. Just a note, I went back to the amulet and I decided I'd rather have Ranks of Toxic Claws as a passive um, instead of the damage reduction from poisoned enemies, just because we're using basically all sources of damage that can benefit from this. So that should add up over time. So for the Paragon boards, the only thing I wasn't 100% sure about is whether or not I wanted to use the Wilds Glyph. It does give a massive increase to our Poison Creeper damage, but it doesn't benefit anything else in the build. Also, there's a possibility that I might drop Poison Creeper from the build in the future if I feel like the cooldown from the Rabies is good enough to spam it enough. So we'll see how that goes. On the starter board, we're going to get all the rare nodes, and we're going to put Keeper Glyph here. Then we're going to move up, and we're going to attach the Inner Beast board, where we're going to get a few of the rare nodes, and we're going to put Guzzler here. Moving to the left, we're attaching the Heightened Malice board. We're going to put Fang and Claw here, and we're going to get a bunch of rare nodes, as well as the legendary node for Heightened Malice. Moving up from here, we're going to attach the Constricting Tendrils board, where we're going to be getting the Territorial Glyph, a couple of rare nodes, and we're also going to get the legendary node here. Now, this is not a node that I often get, but because we're going so hard into Lucky Hit in this build, I thought it might be worth it. After that, we're going to move all the way to the bottom, where we're going to attach the Lust for Carnage board. We're going to get a couple of rare nodes on the way and get a Bane Glyph here. Finally, moving to the right, we've got the Ancestral Guidance board. We're going to put the Tectonic Glyph here. We don't have earth damage, but 20% lucky hit chance sounded too good to not grab. There's a possibility I'll change this in the future and go for wilds instead. But for now, this is what I'm going with. This build gets a little bit weird because we're splitting our damage between basic skills and poison, but I tried to get as many things as possible that work for both of them so that we're not spreading our damage. 
it's definitely possible I'll find better ways to optimize this going forward, but I think it's in a pretty good spot right now, and this is the build I'm actually most excited to play. But either way, I hope you guys enjoy the build, and it's real close to Season 3, so I'm going to have to finish here. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Daddy drew it out. What? You thought I was going to do something weird? No, go watch my Twitch stream. What's wrong with you? <laughs>